Hi, welcome to video three on problem solving using data structures and algorithm. Uh, in this lecture, uh, and essentially I've divided this lecture into three parts. So this is video one of this lecture. In this uh, lecture, we'll talk about introduction to arrays in Python. Uh, what are low level arrays, dynamic arrays, and then obviously, uh, eventually our goal is to uh, solve array based interview problems. Okay, in this particular video, I'm talking about introduction to arrays and low level arrays. Um, in Python, there are sequences and uh, sequence classes, essentially. And the way we represent these is in the form of three different uh, object types. So these are lists, tuples, and strings. So there's certain commonalities if you look at these uh, object types in Python. That means you can index all of these, right? For instance, L of 0, L of 1, and so on, based on their position. So they all support indexing. And there's a slight difference in the fact that lists support um, the lists are mutable. So I can do an L of 0 equals 10. However, I cannot do for, for a tuple. Let's say tuple is represented by T. T of 0 equals 10. So that's the basic difference. That's a major difference. And these are three uh, object types that support arrays or support sequences. Okay. Uh, Low-level array theory is something that a programmer needs to know because for a proper understanding of the out outward semantics for a class, for an array-based class or any other class, it's important to also understand what's happening inside. So in this lecture, we're talking about uh, a, a low-level computer architecture that deals with array class and how things are uh, when we are dealing with arrays. So we'll talk about computer memory, memory address, and then finally referential arrays. Now, a computer system has huge number of bytes of memory, right? To keep track of what information is stored. And it's usually stored in uh, the information that's stored is represented using uh, a byte, right? So that's an abstraction. Uh, the computer uses as an abstraction as a memory address. Okay. So why is this related to the, the arrays that we're talking about right now? So in effect, each byte of memory is associated with a unique number that serves as its address. So for instance, let's say um, some, um, uh, like a computer system can refer to the data in byte, for instance, number 210, right? Versus the data byte in some 2001578, uh, some number, right? So these are addresses. These numbers are nothing but a representation of where your data is stored in like extremely simple terms. Uh, so essentially, it, like your computer provides a memory system where you can save things and mostly you can save things in a sequence, sequential fashion. Uh, for instance, if this is the memory address 210, this has to be 211 and so on. So we can save our, our data in a more uh, sequential um, uh, fashion because this uh, concept of memory is related or it's labeled with sort of these numbers that are sequential in nature, right? So despite the sequential nature of the numbering system, uh, the computer hardware is designed so that any byte, for example, it, whether the byte is saved here or the byte is saved here, uh, we should be efficiently able to access that. So the, the effort that's that goes in accessing this versus this is equal. And that is possible because of the random access memory. And maybe you're familiar with all these uh, ideas, but that's what we are discussing in this lecture. So as I said, memory address is nothing but it's an abstraction. So each memory byte, so that's byte is like how computer refers to data in byte, is associated with a unique number. And that number is nothing but your address. We already talked about this. The way the retrieval happens is, is, uh, is whether you're accessing the byte here or here, both are equal, both require equal effort. And then a group of related variables can be stored one after the other in a computer memory, just like we saw like in a sequence. So if we can save elements one after the other, let's say this was 210, the, the memory location, this was 211, 212, and so on. And we could save some elements here, let's say one, two, three, four, sequentially, right? And then refer to this object as an array. So that's what the definition was. This is a representation of an array, right? Now, a little bit about Python specific stuff. So Python strings, for example, um, are an example of an array, such as, like lists are an example of array. Uh, so each character is represented using Unicode character set. So each uh, Unicode character is represented by 16 bits or two bytes. Um, 
this is how python saves each uh, element right so now we we'll denote this this representation of things that are saved one after the other uh, as an array as i said uh, already right so for instance let's say i created a string of apple right so i said uh, my string quotes is apple right so this is the string and the way it will be saved in my memory is let's say as i said there will be some memory address let's say 214 215 and this array was saved starting from 216 so apple a and the way python will save each character is such that each will take two bytes right so a, a python string embedded as an array of characters in the computer memory is such uh, that a, a, a sick like a single character will be represented by two bytes so for example a will be stored in two consecutive bytes right so here 216 and 217 and then p again 218 and 219 and similarly so on right however at a level higher these are represented as 0 1 2 3 4 Right, so this is how we represent the position. So this is an array of five characters, one, two, three, four, five, and it takes 10 bytes of memory. Why? Because each cell or each position is associated with two bytes. That's how Python refers to, uh, like we'll refer to each location within an array as a cell and we'll use an integer index to describe its location within the array. So this is how the representation happens, right? But high level, we usually represent it but just by using these numbers. Okay, so each cell of the array must use same number of bytes when we are uh, defining an array, right? So this will allow an arbitrary cell of the array to be accessed in constant time based on index. Why? Because I'm having equal effort. Each one is two bytes. This one is two bytes. This one is two bytes. This one is two bytes. So I, I, I just, I can just like go ahead and save them easily and access them easily, right? So this is all about how uh, we save arrays in, in, in our memory. Now, what can happen if let's say I have a list with elements as name of students? Right, so let us assume I have uh, John uh, and I have uh, Helena and I have my name, right? And then, and so on, right? Maybe I have a smaller name and so on. So now our argument that each character, this is also an array, right? But the, the, the elements in this array are of different sizes because the elements themselves are something else, right? So how, does the like how will python save um, these values because we just said that an array will be a representation of each element uh, will be a representation within the lower uh, memory so that each element will have an equal number of bytes associated with it right so to represent this array python has to adhere to the requirement that each cell of the array use the name like the same number of bytes yet the elements are strings and strings have different lengths right so in, in order to solve a problem like this what python does is that it creates references and that's what referential arrays are right for this rep, uh, like representation that's what python does because okay so like the first thing that comes to my mind is like go and check which is the biggest length string for example helena in this case so reserve enough space for each cell to hold maximum length string Right? This could, could be one solution, like maybe uh, specify this one is taking, I don't know, eight bytes. So then just go and specify eight bytes for every element in list L. But that could be wasteful because maybe I can have like smaller or, or, or smaller uh, strings, right? So that can be wasteful. And in order to deal with that, uh, there's something that's known as like the lower level memory, the way we store these consecutive uh, sequence of um, values is by storing consecutive sequence of memory addresses at which, at which each of these elements or the like these sequences uh, reside. Okay, that might seem like a little vague. Let me actually show you how that works. So the idea is that at the lowest level, store consecutive memory addresses, which means let's say like, let's assume this L looks something like this. So it starts saving from uh, zero. This is my one. This is my two, this is my three. So I'm just like representing not the memory addresses, but the actual index indices, right? And then these indices or these memory locations will point or refer to these elements. For instance, Helena 
and so so here it doesn't matter like what's happening all i'm doing is i'm referring to these uh, strings essentially right so I, i'm not saving them i'm not assigning them any um, size the relative size of these individual elements can vary because we can see that here so they they're not the same but the number of bits that are used to store the memory address of each element is fixed so in this way uh, python can support constant time access to a list or a tuple because i don't care like what the size of this is right all i care is is the the sequence that's representing my array and they're referring to these elements somewhere else and the more the, the whole point was it should support constant time access which which is possible because every element should have an equally assigned uh, memory you know space right so this is how referential arrays work a little bit uh, more on the semantics of lists and tuples that i want to talk about um a single list can have references to the same object as elements of list and the elements of list the same elements of list can be accessed by two different um references so this is important this goes back to uh, in our python course if you're looking at it uh, there's something called aliasing right so um this is evident in slicing and assignment so what does that mean right so let's say i have a list 1 and list 1 is nothing but it saves uh, certain uh, prime numbers right so let's say this is my uh, indices 1 2 3 4 and so on so i might have more and then these are my references so 2 3 uh, 5 7 right so this is how i'm referring here uh and so on right so if you remember if i create a slice of list 1 and i I'll, i'll say maybe begin from element 1 and go up to element 3 right so what happens here is that i have created this new list which is a temporary list right so i'm calling it t e m p it's a temporary list and it begins at position 1 so it so it'll have like uh, again it'll have its own indices 0 1 and 2 but these will point to these these elements here uh and 1 2 3 does not include 3 so it will have just like two elements right so it will have 1 and 2 so it's it's again referencing to the same elements but this is a new temp list similarly if i i go ahead and do an assignment to this temp at position 0 let's say i say temp at position 0 is not 3 anymore but it's 15 so now this will reference to this 15 somewhere else Right, so this is how slicing and assignment actually happens, and this is the whole uh, idea behind referential uh, lists. Okay, so so th so this was about this was generally about array-based sequences, how low-level arrays and and uh, the memory system works when we are dealing with arrays. It could be lists or strings. So that's it for this lecture. You can ask questions in the comments. In the next lecture, I'll talk about, which is part of this lecture only. In the next video, I'll talk about. um dynamic arrays